it is time. Today I'm going to look at three lightweight, compact smartphone gimbals. The DJI OM4, the Xeon Smooth Q3, and the Hoem iSteady X2. If you're thinking about buying a small gimbal, you might be wondering which one of these is the best for you. So I'm going to try them out side by side and see how they compare. The DJI OM4 came out last year, while the Smooth Q3 and iSteady X2 are recent releases. They are all updates on popular gimbals. All three can be broken down into a smaller size to make them easier to carry. The OM4 and the iSteady X2 are foldable and haven't really changed from their previous models. But the Smooth Q3 has a sliding gimbal arm instead. Well, as all these gimbals are designed to be small and lightweight, let's look at that first. The iSteady X2 clearly folds up smaller than the other two. And when folded, I would say it's a more convenient shape long and thin. The other two are going to take up a little more space. The Smooth Q3 is the biggest when folded, but not by too much. When I weighed them, the OM4 came out at 428 grams, the Smooth Q3 at 346 grams, and the iSteady X2 at only 252 grams. So when it comes to weight, that's quite a big difference. The iSteady X2 is by far the lightest of the three. I kept the OM4 metal clamp on even though it's detachable because I think that's a fairer comparison. Even without the clamp, it still weighs almost 400 grams. The question is, is it actually better to have less weight? Because weight in your hand can help you keep your hand steadier. Well, there are other options like you could attach a small tripod to your gimbal to add extra weight. How much can these gimbals carry? I have two of the biggest phones on the market, the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Samsung Note 20 Ultra, and I've found all three gimbals can handle these heavy phones. The official max payload of the gimbals is 280 grams for the Smooth Q3 and the same for the iSteady X2. DJI says the OM4 can carry 230 grams plus or minus 60 grams. So I guess you could say it has a max payload of 290 grams. Well, in practice, I have found the motors of all three gimbals are roughly equal. Only difference is that if the Hoem detects there's too much weight, it kind of quits and lights start flashing. And with the other two, they will give it a go, even if you do overload one side. But perhaps the Hoem strategy will preserve your gimbal's motors in the long run. While many features are shared by all three gimbals, each gimbal also has its own unique features. The DJI OM4 has a magnetic mounting system. When this was first released, there was a bit of negative reaction to the idea of using a magnet to hold your smartphone to a gimbal. Well, I can honestly say both my heavy phones have been totally secure on this gimbal. The magnetic mount allows you to quickly pull your phone from the gimbal as well. For filmmaking purposes, I personally love this. I like to mix my shots and not have every shot on the gimbal. With this, I can quickly set up a handheld shot. Also, you might like this if you quickly want to answer a call or check your phone for some reason. Hello. The t cinematic t-shirt. Well, it's just like a kind of joke to myself. Yeah, it's like, you know, if you call something cinematic, then it is cinematic. What do you mean you don't get it? Another feature unique to the DJI gimbal compared to the other two in this video is that you can place counterweights. These ones are by Ulanzi and are pretty cheap. So if you want to add a case, lens and filter to your phone, it's going to be too heavy on one side. But if you add a counterweight, it balances out. The Q3's unique feature is its inbuilt selfie light. Just tap it on and off and switch between three different brightness levels. So for vlogging purposes, this could be very useful. The other unique feature of this gimbal is the way it slides rather than folds. The iSteady X2's unique feature is the remote control. This little device gives you plenty to play with. Switch modes, pan left and right, zoom in and out, start record or take a picture, recenter the gimbal. Switch from front to back camera, switch from portrait to landscape, and more. 
You can even set it up to pull focus using the remote, which is pretty awesome, isn't it? And this makes filming solo a lot easier. Each gimbal comes with an accompanying app. DJI offers you the Mimo app, Xion the Kami app, and Hoem the Hoem Pro app. So how does each app compare? Some people use the gimbal with a different app, like the native camera app of your phone, or a third-party app, like Filmic Pro. Please bear that in mind when watching reviews of gimbals on YouTube, because you really get quite contrasting results. Out of the three apps, in my opinion, the DJI Mimo app is the most advanced, has the most features, and delivers the best quality video. I would say the Hoem app comes second, and the Jiren Kami app last thing about apps is they function differently on different devices, so other people might get different results to me. In my experience, the Mimo app just works. On an iPhone, there is a greater range of manual controls than the other two apps, if you want to control shutter speed for example. However, on Android, there actually are no manual controls. The other two apps do have a couple of unique features you can't find on the Mimo app. The Xion Kami app allows you to set very slow shutter speeds, which is pretty good for adding motion blur to hyperlapse shots. Meanwhile, the Hoem Pro app allows you to switch to focus control instead of zoom, so you can use the zoom controller to perform a focus pull. As I never use zoom, being able to switch to focus is much more useful. Another thing you can do in the Hoem Pro app is to adjust the sensitivity of the motors. So when I first tried the iSteady X2, it was too sensitive, so I switched it to low sensitivity and I got much smoother results. Aside from that, the Mimo and Kami apps have more features than the Hoem app. All three have a story mode style feature, which allows you to create quick sequences from templates. Mimo and Kami allow you to edit within the app, including AI editing using templates, but the Hoem app does not. All three apps allow motion time-lapse where you can program the camera to pan or tilt during the shot. Mimo and Kami have hyperlapse modes. Hoem does not. And on my Samsung devices, all the apps allowed me to shoot at 30 frames per second only. I tested each app shooting at 60 frames per second at 4K resolution to check for any frame rate issues. I tested each gimbal with two big phones and one small phone, so that's three gimbals and three phones. For each combination, I tested using the accompanying app and with the phone's native app. Because the apps can only shoot 30 frames per second on my Samsungs, I will just stick to 30 frames per second for everything.
Yeah, that was an awful lot of footage. Did you actually sit through every single clip there? If you did, you have uh, some staying power. So let's uh, award the winner. And um, it's gonna be... No, not really. Second prize for Hoem. And that's gonna be number one, still there. DJI OM4, still my favorite. It hasn't been uh, toppled from the perch. And number three, not by too much, the Zhiyun. Yeah, I just find that the Zhiyun isn't as smooth as the Hoem. Being able to reduce the sensitivity of the motors on the Hoem is uh, a really great feature. Uh, yeah, so that's it. What do you think? What, which one is your favorite? Of course, these two are, are a lot less money. So if you're on a tight budget, they could do a job for you. And that's it. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to my patrons again for supporting me and the channel. And it allows me to keep making these videos, putting the time in, going that extra mile. I'm adding some extra podcasts about Filmic Pro and there's all kinds of other stuff there. Check it out if you're interested. You can get to watch every single episode of Silent Eye, which was all shot on smartphones. Actually shot on an S9, which I used in this test. So yeah, anyway, happy uh, filming and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.